here we are, my next unboxing. So, um, what do we have here? I bought a bunch of locking collars. Uh, that are the one inch locking collars. It has the set screw that pops in. I probably don't need that many. Not realizing that the next thing on my list, my pillow block bearings have set screws. So, maybe I can use a little locking collar on the other side for security. I'll have to look that up to see uh, you know what I want to go with. Um, my chain, I'm going with a number 35 chain. Reason being is for my verse sprocket size. So this is uh, actually a silver chain, which is kind of nice looking. Um, it didn't really cost much more for the silver. They also had like gold or just plain black. Um, but I figured get something that looks nice. The clutch that I have is just a standard 12 tooth clutch. Um, I went with a, a 12 tooth clutch and the rear gear, which is not here yet, is uh, 50 tooth. And the reason why I went that route is for the diameter of the gear. Uh, it needed to be small enough to be, you know, significantly smaller than my 10.2 inch uh, tire diameter. So I wanted to get something a little bit smaller. That's why I went with a number 35 chain um, and knocked the rear gear size down significantly. The other thing too that I should mention is um, gearing everywhere that I've read uh, you should be at 6 to 1 ratio. So I have a 12 tooth sprocket and a 50 tooth gear and all you do is divide those two numbers and you come up with a 5 to 1 ratio which isn't terrible. I think it'll work out fine. Um, my gear isn't here yet. That's a drop ship item. It's a, an aluminum one that I'll shoot on another video. But here is the, um, the hub for that gear. Um, just drop the hardware there. And then my 32 inch axle. Um, the pillow block bearings are highlight. I don't know if I caught that earlier. And uh, should be some fun. Uh, after we get this set up, I will take and uh, worry about the front end as far as um, getting front tires. That's gonna be way down the road. And then also the braking system I'm completely unsure of. Um, a lot of people rip on band brakes and being that this is such a heavy cart that uh, maybe I should go with um, a disc brake but um, not a mechanical disc brake, a hydraulic disc brake. It's a ex more expensive system but with the weight that I'm working with I, uh, I might do that. But that's to come in a later video. Right now we're just going to worry about the rear end and getting everything mounted. Alright, so we've got the um, <clears throat> spacers in on the other side that's like a one inch uh, spacer board that I put in and just kind of sizing it up it's gonna be tight on clearance um, if I did have any problems I could always sand it a little bit but uh, this is gonna be the basic setup and have this pillow block bearing it did raise it a little bit um, giving us a little bit more room around the tire on the wheel well but again we could always sand it and uh, Height-wise, I like the amount of lift that it gives, just just enough to make it pretty usable um, so the rubber off for the bumper uh, doesn't drag or anything anywhere. All right, I've got my axle set up. Um, I've got a couple extra locking collars that are not necessary, but it's just going to hold the pillow block bearings in place um, while I try to figure out where exactly I need everything to go. I cut off a piece of my quarter-inch key stock and that simply just slides in that groove right there and you hammer it down in. Uh, I'm going to tighten my nut to where I want it first and then uh, drive in my key stock from this side. I went ahead and locked down my nut and now I'm going to start driving in my key stock with a hammer and a nice piece of metal here um, to drive it down in. There we go. Got my key in, slid my locking collar over it, and locked it down real good and tight. Now let's get it all sized up. To make things easier to keep square, I decided to use the existing holes as my center line for uh, the pillow block bearings holes. So I went ahead and drew some straight lines, and now I'm going to line up to see where I want my pillow block bearings to be. Stepped up to the biggest drill bit that I have, which is a 3 8 
My next biggest one is an oversized bit, which um, I think it's just a hair over a half inch. My oversized bit was a 5 8 and yeah, it's a little bit bigger than a half inch, but it should work. Got my hardware in on the one side, marked up on my line. Um, I'm going to use this line here, center it, to drill my second hole. Oh yeah, second hole is in. Yay, no more drilling. I got the second hole put in for the second bearing. So now we're going to go ahead and mount the axle and see what that looks like. Let's finish sanding this out so it's nice and smooth for the wheels. I'm going to go ahead and sand this out and get it nice and smooth so we can put the wheels in. Feels pretty good. Okay, so we got the uh, axle put in and my clearances, I could not get any tighter than that. I mean, there's literally only a couple inches here and there. I might have to uh, cut it back a little bit in spots, maybe, I don't know. But uh, she works. Got one live axle installed. Looks pretty cool. We can move on to the next phase, which is going to be um, my gear will come in uh, Monday and then. Uh, we can put this on its side. Once I get the, the exacts figured out, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this nut down. There's only a little bit of, just barely uh, on there. It's uh, only protruding out from the nut, maybe like an eighth of an inch, um, just so it's all the way on there. They are a lock nut, so it should hold. So hopefully my geometry is good on this, um, we'll find out, but um, using the holes that I had, I, I measured pretty accurately and drilled everything as accurately as I could, so I think it should be pretty good. Um, not a whole heck of a lot of room either for the, the sprocket to go in here, so, because uh, the motor's going to be right here and my chain's going to run down to my sprocket, um, so I'm going to have to cut out, you know, a nice big slot right there for the sprocket and uh, run the chain. And then the other part will be figuring out how to replace this with uh, wheels. I'm kind of thinking about just making like a double wheel, like this kind of wheel, and put two of those with a bar, you know, with a, an axle and like a, a fork kind of deal. Kind of make, make like a motorcycle wheel with like two wheels basically. So that should give it enough stability. Um, it's not too wide. The other thing I could do too is use one of those really wide low profile tires if I can get my measurements down right because I don't want any rake on this I want this to sit level obviously so I'll have to measure how high this puts the, uh, the cart up in the air um, but yeah this is coming along pretty good this was a big step for me because I was really worried about the math on this thing and it's looking pretty good